A mortgage is a loan you can take out to purchase a home. They're one of the most common ways in which people borrow money, and they offer the opportunity for everyday people to own a home. Mortgages as we know them are a lot more modern than you might think. Home ownership throughout history was as rare as land ownership, and usually property was consolidated into the hands of the very few and wealthy. Prior to the 1930s, you would usually have to put down a 50% down payment and pay back the entire mortgage within five years. But since the Great Depression, financial innovation has reduced the risk of mortgage lending and made it something that is affordable to most people. There's a handy formula for calculating what your mor monthly mortgage payment will be based on the principal amount borrowed, the interest rate, and the term of the loan. In this equation, P is the principal, R is the monthly interest rate paid, and N is the number of months the loan will be paid back over. Let's do an example. Let's say you buy a house for $300,000 and you put 10% or $30,000 of your own money down. That means you need to borrow the remaining $270,000. That will be the principal amount borrowed. If you get a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, the most common type, at a 6% interest rate, then R will be 0.005 and N will be 360 months. Let me walk you through that. Mortgages are usually paid monthly. And so to find the monthly amount we need to put, we need to put everything in monthly terms. With 12 months in the year, you take the 6%, which in decimal form is 0.06, and divide it by 12 to get 0.005. And then 30 years times 12 months per year is 360 months. When you plug those in and use a calculator to solve, you get a monthly payment of $1,618.79. You would make that payment each month for 30 years. Note you are paying back quite a bit more than $270,000. 360 times $1,618.79 is over $582,000, which means you're paying back the $270,000 borrowed and over $312,000 in interest over those 30 years. The interest is what makes it worthwhile for someone to lend you the money and buy the house up front and be paid back slowly over the course of 30 years. Banks and other mortgage brokers make loans to many different people, and each month the borrowers make their mortgage payment, giving the lender a nice stream of income in the form of that extra bit of interest. Starting in the 1980s, financial institutions started to bundle these mortgage payments together into something called mortgage-backed securities, which they could sell to investors. People with extra money looking to earn a good rate of return could buy these securities. For example, a bank might have lent out, say, $2 million total to the people who bought these six houses. The bank could then bundle those six mortgages together and sell that mortgage-backed security for something above that amount, say $2.5 million. The bank gets paid back with a little interest early, and now the holder of the mortgage-backed security is the one who receives the monthly mortgage payments. And over the life of the security, they will earn back their money and then some. Bundling mortgages together like this is a great way to reduce the risk of mortgage lending. If you had $300,000 that you wanted to invest, it would be really risky to lend it all to someone so they can buy a house. If something goes wrong and they lose their job or their source of income, they might not be able to repay you and you'll lose everything. There are a lot of other investments you could make with a lower risk of delinquency. And so anyone who wants to buy a house would need to pay a really high interest rate to attract any lenders at all. But if instead you could spread out your $300,000 investment across a bunch of homes, the risk would be way lower. The bigger the pool of mortgages is, the more certain you can be about how many people will default and not pay you back. 
you might know that two or three percent will default and so you'll lose two to three percent of your money but you'll also know it won't be more than that and you'll need enough interest to cover those losses to make it worthwhile pooling risk together reduces the overall risk and that reduces the interest rate these mortgage-backed securities grew into an extremely common investment. Mortgages would be pooled together, and then the payments would be broken into tranches. Because many hundreds of millions of dollars worth of mortgages would be pooled together into one security, many different investors would put their money into the security. Investors could decide which tranche they wanted to invest into. Every month, mortgage payments would be pooled together and the investors who bought into the top tranche would be paid first. Then down the levels it would go all the way to the bottom tranche. Investors who bought into the top tranche got a low rate of return on their investment, but the investment was very safe because they would be paid first. Investors who bought into the bottom tranche got a higher return on their investment, but it was riskier. If too many people in the mortgage pool defaulted, then there wouldn't be enough money to pay investors in the bottom tranche. And if things were really bad and lots of people defaulted, even those in the tranches above it would lose their investments. But those who didn't want to take that risk could take the lower rate of return and essentially have a sure thing, because certainly not all of the people in the pool would default. It may sound weird to you, but this was a brilliant and economically beneficial financial innovation. The role of the financial sector is to transform savings into investment. Things like mortgage-backed securities do that job more efficiently. By pooling risk together and then attracting investment with different levels of risk and reward that allow the investors to choose what they're most comfortable with, mortgage rates could be driven down to historically low levels. Essentially, the risk that comes with making any loan could be efficiently distributed amongst those most willing to take that risk. The result was spectacular for American home buyers. In the early 1980s, interest rates were over 15%. Our $270,000 mortgage at 6% interest had a monthly payment of about $1,619. The same mortgage at 15% interest would have a monthly payment of $3,414. The house costs the same amount of money, but the higher interest rate more than doubles the monthly payment. But since 1980, with the advent of mortgage-backed securities and other financial innovations, interest rates have steadily fallen. In the years prior to the financial crisis of 2008, average mortgage, mortgage rates were around 6%, but they have continued to fall since and were around 3% in 2020. At that rate, the $270,000 mortgage comes with a monthly payment of $1,138, almost $500 less per month than it was at a 6% rate. These lower mortgage rates were saving typical Americans a lot of money and making the dream of home ownership available to a massively larger number of Americans.